Hello, this is Glenda Carlin. It is Tuesday, May 25th, 2021. Week before Memorial Day, everybody. I wish you a wonderful weekend. That holiday weekend, be safe, be alert to your mind and to what seems to be going on out there. Welcome, everyone. Uh, tonight, the talk's going to be on holy instant, holy relationship, and the teachings of the Holy Spirit, which really is the forgiveness, true forgiveness aspect of the whole Course in Miracles that Jesus is high teaching of how we think of another person is how we think of ourselves, because there's only one mind. Whatever I think of you or anyone, it, the unconscious mind believes it and thinks it of you. There's only one mind. It doesn't filter any of this. It stores it all. So that's why we call on the Holy Spirit to help us heal unconscious guilt, but why we also practice forgiveness so Holy Spirit can then go heal the unconscious um, guilt that we can't go to, unconscious thoughts. And here comes in Debbie, Debbie Thomas. So we'll wait here a second and we'll do our meditation. Hi, Debbie's connecting to audio. Hey, Glenda, I don't think that you made me co-host because I can't see the participants. Oh, thank in. you. Thank you. I already do. Let us see here. Yeah, you know, I didn't. Thank you. There we go. I could love them in okay, now. Okay, great. Now, but during meditation, I'll look so you can you can meditate. Okay. <laughs> My we hand wanna, we, well, no, <laughs> half is better than none. It so is, it's, it's just true. oh man, a second is better than none. That's a whole yeah. instant, right? Okay. So first thing I want to invite in, um, of course, Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings, ascended masters, Lama Surya Das, all monks, gurus, we'll take all the help we can get. Everyone, help us, guide us what to do or say. Thank you, thank you, thank you for, for being here, all of you all. Oh, um, Holy Son of God, D, Holy Son of God, Lynn, Holy Son of God, Troy, Honey, Holy Son of God, Tina, Holy Son of God, Sally, Holy Son of God, Brian, Holy Son of God, Corinne, Holy Son of God, Julia, Holy Son of God, Peter, Holy Son of God, Debbie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yay. And so now if you want to take a breath, you know, relax. Um, oh, then I want to clarify something here about before the meditation. I get an email from a lady uh, named Judith Coates, who has channeled Jesus for since 1993 her husband was a unity pastor and she would like do stuff i i can't quite remember all the duties you know a wife of a pastor she's helping out everywhere right one day she was sitting in a pew or listening to him and a voice said to her you're going to start talking um giving talks and it was jesus in her mind, and when you listen to her, it's sort of like a course of miracles. Oh, no. You either listen to it and believe it, or you don't. That's but the really thing is, okay, thank you. Um, thank you. We might have a let's see. Uh oh, okay. We need to mute. So we're are we? We're muted. Okay. If we hear a sound, there we, there we go. Then we'll unmute later. Um. So anyway, she sends out a newsletter, guys. And it was so appropriate because in this newsletter, Jesus, you know, is working through her and talking about breathing, <laughs> taking deep breaths. And I'm just going to read this to you um, about quietness. And see, that's meditation. That's when you get the idea to sit in quietness and ask, all things have to be revealed to you. All things have to come to you. There's nothing else that can be done because you are the extension of all that is. See, that's that's what the Course in Miracles True Forgiveness is, thinking of a person as all of it, all of it, all of it, meaning all that it, that is, you're one with God. And there's only God is and nothing else is. So in essence, there's you're one the extension of God, in essence, God. 
But here he goes on and says, however, moment by moment, you oftentimes only activate a certain percentage of you. Therefore, when you want to know miracles, allow yourself to sit in quietness for a moment or so, then you may do something, but sit in quietness until you receive direction to do. The doing comes after the silence of opening yourself and receiving yes with the deep breath. <clears throat> he says, you access yourself, capital S self, by the quietness, by the invitation that you give, by the readiness to open yourself to all. And see, and that's when <clears throat> we go to the light. And see the light. Here comes Christian. We are accepting it. We're entering into that light. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Readiness to open yourself to that light. Accept that light. See, we, you can read things, various books, different places, and it reaffirms what Jesus says in A Course of Miracles, that uh, of the meditation where we look beyond the sun, beyond the stars, past everything you see is this arc of golden light. And see, that's that light that's in your mind that's been, in, we've imprisoned by thoughts of judgment of our brothers and ourselves. So anyway... So that's why it's important to take those deep breaths, three of them before a deep breath in and a breath as far along as you can out to just quiet yourself and go to that silence. And then we're, after you do that, then we're gonna imagine that ray of light. So now just imagine above your head is that huge sun. It's like a thousand suns, a million suns. It's, that's the brightness, the brilliance of God's source, the light that we really live in. And that light is soaked with love. That sun is soaked with love because that's also what God is and you are. But in that sun has a ray that comes down a column of light, a pillar of light that surrounds you and just see that light surround you and picture it going into the earth because you want to ground yourself, even though the, it's all an illusion. We want to keep ourselves grounded, not floating, not floating around, you know, even though we're spirit, immortal spirit. And that light is so pristine, so loving, so beautiful. You want to join with it. But before you do, uh, picture an altar in your mind and put on that altar the things you think you need to be happy, which I also recognize there's another way to say it is put things on that altar that, that you're afraid to lose. Because until you turn over everything to Holy Spirit, he can't help you heal whatever that situation or relationship is. And that's part of tonight's talk in the Course of Miracles. Jesus talks about you don't want one thought hidden. You want to turn it all over so you have open communication. Because see what happens when you're in this meditation, you're receiving the light. And then just picture then you give the light out. It's a receiving and a giving. And it's, that's the extension of of, to God and back to yourself. It's just an extension of that light and love. So anyway, so just picture that, uh, turn your, like your face upward, your eyes focused upward, and you're just basking in that light. Now, if you don't see that light or think about that light, just take your hand and, and lightly remove the clouds away. They're like feathers. They're just thoughts. They're just idle thoughts that can be moved away. And that huge sun, God source is right there to join with in just a second. Now, and if your mind wanders, then just remember to come back. You don't have to not think, just don't try not to think. But when you're aware that you're thinking, just bring your attention back to see, look at, for that light for a second. And you just keep doing that till you're in the light for a holy instant or for a minute or however long it is.
oh, I forgot to say. So after you put those things on the altar that you think you need to be happy or you don't want to lose, then see that altar and those things or people disappear into the light. That's bringing darkness to the light. And then you're focusing your attention on that pristine, brilliant light that surrounds you and is everywhere and join with it. And when you want, you can bring your attention back to this place. But tonight we'll talk, be talking about at any moment during the day, any second, you can just take your attention and go to that light. It's always there. That's the holy instant. The holy second. Just an, even a nanosecond. Just focusing on that light and remembering it's there is just the magnitude is exponential. It's just huge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for the meditation. Now, before we go on now, pick three people on the screen or however many people you want and practice true forgiveness on them where you're either say all of it or you say you are spirit, whole, pure, and innocent, all is forgiven and released. And yourself, you say, I'm immortal spirit. This body's a false image and has nothing to do with what I am. And you can say all of it to yourself as well. Great. And welcome, Christian. We, I saw you come in. Thank you so much for being here. Peter's here, Debbie, Corinne, Dee, Sally, Tina, Lynn, Troy, yay. And, you know, Dee brought up a point. We kind of got a synergy going, you know, of us that some of us attend to be here each meeting. And then there's two individuals that, because different time zones that I know of, watch our, our videos, Mark from England and Langton from France. So yay, without Zoom, we sure wouldn't be able to be doing this. This is so great. Um, now, let us see. Now, um, oh, last week, because um, there, was, there was such a private conversation shared, that's why I didn't put the, the meeting on YouTube, but gave you all the link. And if you weren't able to open the link or D said we could share it now with certain whoever you want to share it with, I won't put it on YouTube. But if it doesn't open, then feel free to call me or email me and I'll help you walk it, walk it through it. But there's, a, I'll, there's an email that's got the link and then there's a passcode. Then also D's going to work out the app where we can talk to each other in a, in a text as well and be getting back to us on that. Linda, I'm okay. I'm okay if you post it on YouTube. I'm okay with that. Oh, really? Yeah, if you want, I'm okay with it. I'm totally okay. Wow. Well, see, that would really help a lot of people. Yeah, it would. Wow. Yeah. Wow, it's your husband's that. okay with that? Your husband's okay? Yeah, that? he's okay with it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow, because everything we got usually is a husband, wife, or 
or wife, wife, or husband, husband, or partners, or loved ones, or re- children. So uh, relationships, all we got. And now, what's so powerful about your testimony and witnessing to the ability to turn things over the Holy Spirit is that Jesus tells us the holy relationship is the closest we come to being like in heaven because that's a union with a brother union and we're seeing oneness in another person and and we were talking about that before the recording started is you don't have to two people don't have to agree that there has to be a better way which Dee and her husband did so they both felt the union and that holy portal of oneness in their minds when they looked into each other's eyes but you can do this silently with another person without them even knowing it um and all you're doing is thinking about them as spirit immortal spirit and how much you love them and it'll come to you what to think and you're it's just in an instant you're remembering their spirit and you love them as spirit you know um what I want to um hey Glenda I'm also okay if anybody has another app um I'll put my I don't mind sharing my phone number I'm going to put it up in the chat and if anybody has a better app to get on uh, I'm willing if anybody um I'm okay with that okay so you're going to put your phone number over there so then they can call you and you can talk with them or, or like a text message, whatever anybody, we, we should decide, I think, um, what app we all like, and then we can all oh. download that app or I, okay. I picked group me because I know, um, like it's kind of private. Nobody could see anybody's numbers, but, um, it's okay. I mean, I don't mind if somebody wants to go to signal or WhatsApp or, um, what, what, uh, Corinne said over there too, is fine with me. Okay. Um, then we could what let's see how do you, I would like for them to communicate with you so will you put your email and phone number over in chat okay and then they can contact you and you all work it out because I have okay. no preference okay okay I don't care either yeah uh-huh. okay whatever's right. best for you all um okay so um This comes from chapter 18 called the happy dream, chapter 18. But I'm also mainly going to talk about chapter 15, which is the holy instant and the holy relationship. But in chapter 18, Jesus says, uh, uh, section five, sentence three, the holy instant, the holy relationship, the Holy Spirit's teaching and all the means by which salvation is accomplished would have no purpose. Because we we believe we're separate from God. Um, Oh, wait, let me keep going on the sentence. For they are all but aspects of the plan to change your dreams of fear, the happy dreams, from which you waken easily to knowledge. So the means to wake up from the dream are these three main ingredients, the holy instant, the holy relationship, Holy Spirit's teaching. And his teaching is also that true forgiveness. That's our, how we attain the salvation. We save ourselves and we save our brothers. And But in that chapter 18, Jesus says, never approach the holy instant after you've tried to remove all fear and hatred from your mind. That is its function. So like in this meditation, or during the day when you want to go to your mind, you don't have to purify it. You don't have to get rid of any thought that you were thinking or uh, being upset or anything. You just go instantly to the light. That's how simple it is. You don't, he's saying here, that's the function of the Holy Instant and Holy Spirit. Never attempt to overlook, overlook your guilt before you ask the Holy Spirit's help. This is his function. Your part is only to offer him a little willingness to let him remove all fear and hatred and to be forgiven. On your little faith, joined with his understanding, he will build your part in the atonement and make sure that you fulfill it easily. And with him, you will build a ladder planted in the solid rock of faith and rising even to heaven. 
nor will you use it to ascend to heaven alone. Then in section, this uh, paragraph three, it goes on to say, through your holy relationship, reborn and blessed in every holy instant, you do not arrange, thousands will rise to heaven with you. So that's really important because um, we, in essence, this chapter 18 and 15 talks about all it takes is your little willingness to turn over your thoughts to Holy Spirit. That's all it takes. We don't have to figure all this out. We don't have to understand anything. We just turn over our thoughts and ask for help to see things differently, right? But, but we don't do that. We're always some, I'm always sometimes trying to fix something. Before I know it, I'm trying to fix, uh, think of a solution on something. That's why you meditate in that holy instant and and put things on the altar so later you can be inspired. Holy Spirit will inspire you with a solution for these seeming mortal things so your life flows easier. You do get, this is a, this is a normal live your life course that Jesus has here. We're not giving up anything. We're not sacrificing anything. You can live a normal life. You can do your normal work. Whatever work you do to earn money, it doesn't matter. You're just giving up your judgment of whether some job you have you think is less holy than some other job. It, it, that's all our thoughts. That's not Holy Spirit's thoughts at all. We, um, <laughs> but I never thought about that. Oh, and then Jesus tells us in chapter, oh, the necessary condition, page four, four. Oh, here it is, chapter 15, section four, paragraph nine. Here's the necessary condition for the holy instant. I mean, really. So the necessary condition for the holy instant does not require that you have no thoughts that are not pure. This continues on to that chapter 18. But it does require that you have none that you would keep. Innocence is not of your making. It is given you the instant you would have it. Atonement would not be, atonement would not be if there were no need for it. You will not be able to accept perfect communication as long as you would hide it from yourself. For what you would hide is hidden from you. In your practice then, try only to be vigilant against deception and seek not to protect the thoughts you would keep to yourself. Let the Holy Spirit's purity shine them away and bring all your awareness to the readiness for purity he offers you. Thus, he will make you ready to acknowledge that you are host to God and hostage to no one and to nothing. Now, this brings us kind of to the point, like if D, if you want to share with us again, how when D had the feeling, when I would say, put things on the altar, you need to be happy, she had some ideas of things she wasn't going to put on the altar because she was afraid she would lose them. But you're better at explaining that to me, I mean, to all of us than I am because that stopped your thought of loss stopped you from putting some things on the altar and then having them transformed. So do you want to share some of that, Dee, please? Sure. Um, when, when, when you say the altar... Um, I never asked you what it meant. And I knew what I, when you said what I need to be happy here. And that was my husband and my children, but I was afraid to offer them on the altar. Like they would be taken. Um, you know, that's totally the ego going, Oh, you can't do that. Um, but I kept doing it anyway, just with, you know, with uh, faith and trust that the Holy spirit, um, got my back and, I put them up there every week and realized um, that when I had that experience, that in the experience that my husband and I had, um, it sounds weird, but I, I didn't love my kids any more or less than I loved everybody else. Uh, and that was okay. And I knew inherently that every, that they were safe at home um, in it with God and that they're protected and um 
I, I can't explain the love that I, it was like almost like a freedom. Like um, if you give it up, if you give up a special love, you gain one love. And that one love is amazing compared to your, to my little special love that I have for three people. Um, but the one love that I felt was amazing. It's better. Just, just, it's better. It's so much better. Because you felt that Holy Spirit said something to you like, um, I got them. You're not responsible for them or something like that. I, you I know. felt, yeah. It was almost like a freedom. Like you are not responsible for everybody's well-being. You can, you just feel their love. Um, that they're safe and protected. Everybody is safe and protected at home with God. We're just floundering around here but I knew that everybody was safe um I remember saying to my mom when I had my daughter first and then a year later I had my son and I said to my mom how am I going to love the second baby as much as I love the first and she said don't worry you will and that's that was you just do love your second child however many children you have you just love them just as much as the first one that you had but you can't imagine that you could love them as much um and then that just snowballs into loving everyone. And it's a different love. I, I, I wish I could explain it, but I can't. Um, but I, I felt at ease with that. I felt comforted by that love. There was no special love. Or, and, and that they wouldn't be taken from you because that's yes. why Holy Spirit had me describe tonight. We don't give up anything. We no. don't lose our, our husband, our wives, or our wives and our husbands, uh, our partners. We don't lose them in this. It elevates, it transforms to instance of that holy love, uh, 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 feeling of, of a deeper love. So that's the purpose of the holy instant. So you were at, or revelation. So what I'm, I'm just want to re-clarify, you can put anything on the altar because that's what yeah. Jesus is saying. Because th tonight, the crux of this holy instant is that in chapter 15, that we think we have private thoughts. And there's, uh, let's see, where is this? Um, oh, um, wait, I'm on chapter, I'm on page four of my notes, but that's, guess where I'll be. <laughs> there's one through four page. Oh, he, but Jesus says you could live forever in the holy instant, beginning now and reaching to eternity, but for a very simple reason. Do not obscure the simplicity of the reason, for if you do, it will be only because you prefer not to recognize it and not to let it go. The simple reason simply stated is this. The holy instant is a time in which you receive and give perfect communication. This means, however, that it's a time in which your mind is open, both to receive and give. It is a recognition that all minds are in communication. It therefore seeks to change nothing, but merely to accept everything. When I was reading that, I was trying to think about how to explain that holy instant. So picture when you go to that, go to the light that you are. And if you receive that light, join that with that light in an instant, just imagine or picture that that light extends, let's just say your mind is here where your head is. It's really, it has no confines. The brain and the head and the skull don't hold it. It's just here. But the mind then extends, you can just picture it like a line, an extension that light is extending out. You could call it radiating out. That Then you're giving that light out to this illusion. So you're receiving the light and then giving it. That will greatly help in this practice of giving. Of first you're receiving, then you're giving. And it's just a cycle because once once you give out love, it, you're receiving it back and you're giving it. I think that's the symphony of love that's in heaven. It's a constant give, receive, and give of love and light, that extension. So just picture that movement going back and forth. 
And before you know it, you will be in that light. And with a, you can either take a breath and join with the breath, however you want to do it, but picture that light and just go with that light, be with that light and picture it extending out because that's the other thing the Course says. You are an extension of God. And all your creations are extension of you. But what is that creation? Well, it's love. It's this immortal love that Dee was talking about that she felt, that love of oneness, the same love for every person. But we this builds on it. You don't you feel that in an instant, and then that is satisfying, and you keep practicing true forgiveness, thinking of your brother or spirit. And this builds on itself. So then you can live in the holy instant longer and longer, have more holy instants is what he's saying here. But Jesus says, but be honest with yourself. Do you really want perfect communication? Am I wholly willing to let everything that interferes with it go forever? So in that meditation, when you have a thought, just let that thought you can't sometimes let a thought go, but just focus your attention back on the light. That's, that is your determination to be in the light. And in that light is your communication with God and all your brothers. I hope that helps because that's one thing. Holy Spirit was trying to get me to explain how I picture, how I see and feel this light that it just uh, it, it, it downloads and then it just extends out. That's your natural state. It just, you receive that light and then it pulsates and extends out. But there was another place here where um, oh, is remembering to do this. That's the big deal why you have the sticky notes. And it came to mind the bell of mindfulness from that monk. Remember the monk, uh, and I wrote his name down, the one that I never can say his name correctly, T-H-I, <laughs> Han. <laughs> oh, yeah, T-H-I-C-H-N-H-A-T, H-A-N-H, bell of mindfulness. That came about because... Uh, there's a book he has being peace and I'm I have that book and I'm reading it but what he says is a sound like when you're, you're out walking or in your yard or even out driving well not really driving at a traffic light <laughs> well you don't want to do this when you're driving uh then you do this at home and in your yard a bird sound if you're walking the sound of a car in the distant a form, even a tree. You use all these things as a reminder to go back to your mind. The, it's called the bell of mindfulness. So the sound of a bird tweeting, sound of a car, because the mind just automatically, we're looking out there at all the things out there and, and separating them, looking at them, judging them. That's a, that's a chair, that chair's green. Ego's just sorting and dividing up everything. But then if you can bring your awareness back to your mind by that reminder of that sound, then you go, oh, I'm going to go to the light for a second. And then you just go to the light. And that's a holy instant. So you're just remembering to do this. And Jesus says, how long is an instant? This is in chapter 15. And he says, could you not give so short a time to the Holy Spirit for your salvation? He asks no more for he has no need of more. So how long is an instant? It takes far longer. Listen to what Jesus says. It takes far longer to teach you to be willing to give him, meaning Holy Spirit, this than for Holy Spirit to use this tiny instant to offer you the whole of heaven. In exchange for this instant, he stands ready to give you the remembrance of eternity. Because I never really understood a holy instant. I never thought I really did. Oh, but when I was writing, look, researching and doing this, what came to me, how I got to the holy instant was, if you practice forgiveness on the people that show up in front of your face or the images in your mind, that's making you stop to think about who do I see out there? There's that person, like there's, there's Tina. 
you know, your spirit, hope, pureness, and always forgive and release. In that second, Sally, your spirit, hope, pureness, and always forgive and release. In that second, I'm remembering what you are. I've stopped. That's a holy instant. And the more that you practice true forgiveness, you're, stop, you're becoming aware of your thoughts and taking charge of your mind. I'm going to practice true forgiveness. And it becomes more habitual that you're remembering to silence, silently say this. And that becomes an instant where you're taking charge of your mind. But then now you can push this further to that you go join uh, just right now. Just think about that light that's above your head that's surrounding you. Just thinking about it, it's a holy instant. That's your immortal self. I mean, that's so little. That's the little willingness he's asking you to do is, and again, in that chapter 15, three or four times, he says, how long is an instant? <laughs> uh, oh, he says, you will never give this holy instant to the Holy Spirit on behalf of your release while you are unwilling to give it to your brothers on behalf of theirs. See, that's that true forgiveness. You're willing to give a holy instant to your brother. That means thinking of him as spirit. For the instant of holiness is shared and cannot be yours alone. So when you're thinking of your brother as spirit, it's so huge, you don't realize, like that's when D and other people have told me, you think nothing's happening. Like Lynn says, Nothing seems to be happening, but I just have faith. I just keep on practicing true forgiveness. Well, let me tell you, there's plenty happening behind the scenes because when you think of your brother's holy, he, Jesus says again here, then it's, uh, it's you too. It's on you. It becomes to you. Remember when you're tempted to attack your, a brother that his instant of release is yours. And here's a definition of miracles. Miracles are the instance of release you offer and will receive. And I'm going to say that again. Miracles are the instance of release you offer and will receive. That's on page 303, chapter 15, section 1, paragraph 12. Well, isn't that a cool definition of all those 51 miracles that Jesus listed there? They're instance of release that we offer our brothers and then you receive them. They attest to your willingness to be released and to offer time to the Holy Spirit for his use of it. Because Holy Spirit changes time, dimensions of time and space for you, and you may not even know it by practicing forgiveness. And then this is in chapter, I mean, paragraph 13, chapter 15. Again, he says, how long is an instant? It is as short for your brother as it is for you. Practice giving this blessed instant of freedom to all who are enslaved by time and thus make time their friend for them. As you give it, he offers it to you. That's Holy Spirit. Again, how long is an instant? Blah, blah, blah. He just keeps going. <laughs> how about this second? He says, which second would you like an instant to be? Now, where was that where he said that that was so cute? How he said this. <laughs> Which second do you want this to be? This second? Which second? Let's see where that is. Would you be hostage to ego or host to God? Is our task together to restore the awareness of magnitude to the host whom God appointed for himself. See, you're the host. <laughs> Your mind is the host of God for God. For God would give himself through you. He reaches from you to everyone and beyond everyone to his son's creations, but without leaving you. Far beyond your little world, but still in you, he extends forever. So remember what I was kind of trying to explain? When you go to the light, and join with the light for a second. Just picture you're joined with it, but picture that light extends out. That's your how what heaven's like. You're constantly extending love and light just like that. It just radiates for, but it's continuous in heaven. But you're extending God. God is in that light that you're in all your brothers are in that light that you extend out. 
love is not little and love dwells in you. That's in chapter 15, section three, paragraph eight, sentence six. Love is not little and love dwells in you for you are host to him. Before the greatness that lives in you, your poor appreciation of yourself and all the little offerings you give slip into nothingness. See, then you're, these thoughts of, of littleness, of uh, being in a form, uh, not being the holy son of God you are, slip into nothingness. Now, this surprised me in chapter 15. Jesus says this, my birth in you is your awakening to grandeur. Welcome me not into a manger, but into the altar to holiness, where holiness abides in perfect peace. My kingdom is not of this world because it is in you and you are of your father. Wow, I have not ever really remembered seeing this, but Jesus is saying, to, remember a few weeks back, we, he talks about just call on me, call on me because I can help ascend you up the ladder. And the span, the distance is so great you can't do this by yourself. So call on him. But he's also saying my birth in you. So you just call on Jesus. I call on him and Holy Spirit at the same time. Is your awakening, and I, I throw in Buddha there. <laughs> and in like means, I throw in ascended masters. I bring them all in. <laughs> but the big deal is Jesus. Because see, when he awakened, he did it for all of us. He says that in the course. So you're remembering his rebirth, his birth back into holiness. That's in you is your awakening to grandeur. Welcome me. He says, that means call on him. Welcome me, not into a manger, but into the altar. So that altar that you picture in your mind, that altar really is that arc of light, that spark of light that is the fragment that got left, seeming fragment that got left in the big bang. And that went out to all the forms. That's that arc or spark of light that will be released in you to know the great ray and live in this light. <laughs> but that great ray, it keeps purifying your mind. And, and Holy Spirit keeps purifying the unconscious on a gradual process so that none of this freaks you out or it's not abrupt. This is nothing abrupt. Because I look back on this great ray downloading that went on for 2019. And it's only when that chanting that Lama Surya Das did of Om Mani Pad P A D M E H U M, that that really sentence that contains like almost all the high high Tibetan teachings. I mean, it is so resonates so with the high sound and vibrations of holiness. And then we chant, we took a deep breath and said a certain word out five times and did that three times where the vibration of that word touched my heart chakra to free it that now the great ray pulsates vertically up and down and no longer really goes right and left. Although once in a while it'll do that because when it's going left, it's purifying the past of thoughts of separation from God. And when it goes to the right, it's uh, um, forward unto God to make room for his presence. And that's the purity that will show up in your mind. That altar will be purified totally of all these thoughts of separation from God. So now let's see what time it is, 7.50. So I'm going to stop with that. Uh, uh, with the final sentence where in chapter 15, Jesus says, I stand within the holy instant as clear as you would have me be. Whoa. And the extent to which you learn to accept me is the measure of the time in which the holy instant will be yours. I call to you to make the holy instant yours at once for the release from littleness in the mind of the host of God depends on willingness and not on time. So uh, the holy instant doesn't depend on time. It's your little willingness just to go to that light as often as you can during the day and night. When you wake up in the night, just go 
remember to focus and go to that light for a second. So I'm going to open up to questions. Anybody want to have a, explain a anything or have a question? I would much appreciate. People love hearing how y'all are doing and anything you're practicing, etc. Oh, I see a hand, Julia. Hi, Julia. <laughs> Hi, D. Hi, everybody. Um, Something you said about when you say you call in all the ascended masters, it reminded me that tomorrow is um, a really special Buddhist holiday. They call, well, it's been for the past week and it's called Waysack. And it's say again, I'm sorry. What's it called? It's called Waysack. And it's I spelled, just... I put something in the link that Did describes you? it in the chat. I put it in the chat. Oh, W-E-S-A-K? It, oh. Yeah, and it describes um, the meaning of Waysak, and um, there's actually a valley in the Himalayas where the Buddhists believe that, um, and tomorrow is like the main anniversary date of it, where all the ascended masters um, gather and really out there. Yeah, and they radiate their blessings out um, to everybody in, on, in this realm, in the human realm and the realm that we're in, the form realm. And so it's also kind of like they celebrate Buddha's birth, death, and enlightenment all together um, on the tomorrow. And so it's a very powerful day for forgiveness or like in the Buddhist, um, they believe that <clears throat> karma is multiplied like a hundred million times or something. So any virtuous deed that you do is um, multiplied, but they don't say that um, your negative virtue is anything that you do negative is gonna be multiplied, but maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I never heard him say that, but uh -huh. um, they do say that it's a really good day to do um, virtuous activity. And then I also put in the link, um, Tit Not Han has a, a, a video, like a song, and he's ringing the great bell. And, and it's this really beautiful um, song meditation. And I put that in the, chant, um, in the chat also. And um, then I wanted to ask a question about, I kind of had this um, thought came to me how we put all our issues on the altar and um, and that we don't really pray for specifics, but we just hand it over. Yes. But I never really heard um, anyone say or the course say that like we could do that as a group. And I thought, you know, why not? Like, you know how you ask people um, like oh. when you're at a church or something, you'd have a prayer list, you know, or um any mm -hmm. kind of you know spiritual groups they usually have prayer lists and so I thought well why that would be cool if like whenever someone needed some assistance that we all put it on our altars you know mm -hmm. that we could request for one another to put it on the altar when Whoa. we're putting it all on the altar and because when we join mine then it's more powerful until oh that's so wonderful now stay put i want a couple of thoughts came to mind in that i am discourses book you know that um d you know volume 38 i was just laying there they he, saint germain talks about that the ascended masters meet uh a certain times even in this christian faith so evidently you're saying they meet in the buddhist faith too because their, their their minds are one and they're uh, they're putting on the all they're putting on the altar our awakening i would bet the enlightenment of everybody well, they, they they say that all the ascended masters like Jida, jesus buddha wow. you know the saints the masters that they wow. you know that have left their form body that they are all there in waysack Oh, and that's been great. There, like, great. All great. week meditating. And then great. tomorrow is like the culmination. Like, I'm so glad you brought that up. Well, yeah. let's do that. Now that, oh, that's so wonderful. Then also, um, 
Oh, that's so wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? So we could also uh, do uh, just a moment like India and Nepal is just in the illusion as a, as a disaster for, with COVID and all the issues that are going on. Let's, let's just close our eyes for a moment and see and put on that altar the uh, country of India and Nepal and whatever's happening there, we just give it. We give it to the Ascended Master's Holy Spirit to guide everyone as to what's the highest good and guide them, everybody as to what to do and say to help. And we can't even just include the whole universe. I mean, what a mess in some of these illusion, it appears uh, we want unity, love, forgiveness on the altar for everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is very powerful. Now, how do I copy this chat, everyone? I copied it. Now, if I leave to go put it in a Word document, will you see my Word document? Or just hold on a second. I want to copy this stuff so I can, I can, um, then I may, I hope I didn't actually, <laughs> actually I leave it. This, I was thinking the same thing that I. Oh, look, there you go. Now, if you want to copy it, you can, co uh, you know, highlight it, copy and go to a Word document, paste it, and then just minimize that document, and you'll come back to this screen. Oh, and what I'll do, I'll include it in the email uh, uh, to everybody, too. I can do that. That's good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Now, oh, any... Uh, any other questions? Any Anything? Uh, anyone want to ask or comment on? De Debbie, do you have a thought? I, something your blocks lighting up here. Julia, were you done with your stuff? Yes, um, I do have a request to put my doggies on the altar. I think I have three dogs, and um, they're they've been sick. I think they got kennel cough, and so it's been a lot of struggling for them. So, and okay. thank you, and thank you for doing this, Glenda, and thank everybody for being here. It's my pleasure. We'll do it. Yes, I did it just then. We want health for everybody's animals and for their selves. Yes, it's magnificent. Well, now, if there's not a question, then I've got something else I'll share is that, see, I, I just simply don't know what's going to happen each day, of course. <laughs> and thank goodness, I have no real expectations, except I do plan, you know, I got a budget. I do those things, but I don't, I'm not attached to them like I used to be. But um, in meditation, when I talk about a holy relationship, I, I'm doing this from an experience where in and the person does not need to be there for you to picture their face, their eyes, and join, look in their eyes, and you can visualize their face, and then picture that column of light, great ray that's there with you, and you will join in the light. You will join with their holiness. You will join with their mind. And... Um, it may be a second or it could be minutes, but I felt the experience worth of minutes where not just the uh, joining with the light and the pulsating of the great ray vertically up and down, where like I've tried to explain to you, then my body, the form just rocks back and forth because the column of light is down the middle. And really, that's the hologram. This faint form just has the light vibrating out, shining out all cells. See, you can picture that when you're meditating, too. That holy light is just going out all your cells. But anyway, 
that column of light uh, started to change in my mind, change colors. It went violet, purple, red, orange, uh, yellow, blue, a different blue, green, different color. But it then my mind opened to this vast blue color. I'd never seen a color blue like that. Only thing I can describe it like it was liquid blue. It was, it was just not a blue I'd ever seen. And I had never felt a color before or joined with a color before, but I joined with that color. It was, <laughs> and the vastness of that blue was to eternity. So the light experience that you could have gives you an experience of eternity, of total extension. Like when you ring the gong and you follow that gong vibration or sound to where there's no sound, but you know that sound is still going. That's the extension of that love and light that you are now. So you just imagine these things and you and in a second and you don't know where, but this is the magnificence of holiness that can be yours. <laughs> I'm a common person. I'm, I'm doing nothing but practicing true forgiveness. I tell you that. Fake it till you make it. I didn't know nothing. I did nothing except do what the true forgiveness that Gary Renard described in Disappearance of the Universe with Art and Persa. Turn your day over to Holy Spirit. And now we know, call on Jesus besides Holy Spirit, plus meditate. But then if you can develop a, a try for a holy relationship with someone in your life that would be huge <laughs> so anyway you all can do this <laughs> or you wouldn't be here listening to this where we are diligent persistent people look at you all happy faces i love you guys <laughs> thank you so much for being here everybody it's my pleasure 803. Now, if anyone doesn't have anything else to say, then we'll just close up shop here tonight, huh? <laughs> I love you guys. Bye. Bye, love you, Brenda. Bye. Bye Thank everyone. You so much. Love you. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much, Brenda. God bless. Love you guys. Thank you very much. I love hearing everybody's voice. Thank you so much, everyone, and ever seeing everyone. Thank You're you. Welcome. Have a great oh, and the, tomorrow. Let's all meditate on this wait, illustrious wait huge. Back. Waysack Day. Oh, that's so great. Thank you, Julia. Okay. So Glenda, I'll say one more thing. Oh, yeah. So in, in Buddhism, they use light a lot for really um in the meditations. And so they have this um these symbols, um, om ah hum. And so you visualize white om at your forehead, and that purifies the body and a red awe at your throat and that purifies your speech and a blue home at your heart and that purifies your mind so the <sighs> blue light is like a a light that purifies your mind h-u-m blue h-u-m yeah some say home and then some say h-u-n-g home home yeah yeah Okay, so om is the white light at the forehead, red the awe at the throat, and, and the blue hum and at the, the heart. Mm -hmm. at the the heart. heart. Um, yeah. Um. Well, yeah, that blue. Oh my. Yeah. Really, I didn't know that. I just oh the course, you know, he just Jesus just talks about the light, the and the and the arc of light, the spark of light, the great ray. Well, we're all and in that, that there's mantra different. You were saying the Om Mani Padme Hum. Right? Yes. The Om yes. is the beginning, the Hum is at oh. the end. Oh, and yes. It's, it's roughly translated that may the sacred jewel at our heart shine forth, bringing joy and love and peace into this world and purify all beings. It's the mantra of compassion Om Mani Padme Hum. Would you uh, email me that uh, definition and I'll send it out to everyone because see that that condenses well that's one of the highest sentences I think the Tibetan Buddhists can say right it contains yes. so many 
Yeah, that's the um, Buddha of compassion. So he's like the foundation for everything. And like the Dalai Lama, they believe that the Dalai Lama is an emanation of the Buddha of compassion. And they use that mantra for the Buddha of compassion. Yes, because we, as I, be, I can, we believe that because we're compassion of all our brothers. We want to help release our brothers. So how we think of them in our forgiveness, isn't that beautiful? The, the intertwine, the parallel things between Buddhism and A Course in Miracles. It just is delightful to me. I, no words can describe it. Especially when he chanted that, that sentence and then... Uh, then had us take that deep breath in. And then when we exhaled, we said H-U-N-G five, five times. And then you take the breath and out. And that vibration, that sound, I felt it vibrate. It's the same like kind of vibrate. I never used to think of chakras or anything like I've explained to you all. I was so busy with the mind trying to practice true forgiveness of my thoughts that I never and re and never really thought about heart because I thought it was part of the body, but really it contains our judgment thoughts of our brother, the love. It's our, our love center. So it's compassion, like you said. So, wow, but I felt that. I felt it, that vibration of that word touched that heart area and it vibrated and got released or opened. The fantastic chanting and mantra that uh, Lama Surya Das does with his Zoshin Foundation. Oh, and you know, on June 5th, he has a day retreat as well, where he chants and does meditation. If anybody's interested, it's a day retreat, June 5th. And Sundays are got free meditation that he does and chants, et cetera. Because I, I just combine it with my meditation with the Course of Miracles. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Cool. Well, thank you, Julia. That, and please text, please email me. I want to send that out to everyone. I will. Okay. Good night, thank everyone. You. Good night. Good night. Love everybody. you. God Good night, everyone. Good night, all. Bye. Bye. Hey, I, took your, I took your number and email address because I figured whatever ends up happening with the chat there or whatever. I'd definitely be interested in being a part of it. However, you guys end up doing it or whatever. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Perfect. I'm good, with, I'm good with any one of them, Bri. I, you know, whatever's easiest for everybody, I think that would be good. Well, you yeah. all figure it out and let me know. <laughs> okay, bye. 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 bye.